So I am here with the lovely Jasmine Cruz. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful, everyone. I'm in a great mood. That's excellent. Um, where, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Go be more. Okay. <laughs> I love uh, Baltimore. A little fun fact. I was a background extra in the original Step Up movie. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like Channing Tatum, like before he was famous <laughs> in that movie. Um, Jenna DeSwan, um, you know. Uh, Drew Sador was in it. It was a bunch of, it was a good time. And it was in Baltimore, the Baltimore School of the Arts. It was filmed there. Oh, so can we see a sample, even though I'm the one being interviewed? I'm <laughs> yeah, I, like, you know, uh, I'm actually, you can see me in the scene. Like, if you go and look on the trailer online, okay. with, uh, like they look, they say, like, you know, I love a man in uniform. I'm actually walking in the hallway right behind Drew Sador and you can see me perfectly. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sure. great, but this interview is about you. Oh, and right. so, uh, where where is um in Baltimore? Did you grow up? I grew up in Catonsville area, Catonsville, Maryland. Is that your husband there? So, hello, hey, hello. Going on, man? Mr. Sexy Buns in the flesh. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> I'm all right. How about yourself? Pretty good, man. Uh, like yo, uh, I've been reading about you guys and stuff, everything online. How how'd you meet? We met on uh, hotornot.com. Yes, the very shallow internet system where you, on a scale of zero to 10, how hot you are, and then you're like, how tender you swipe. Same deal, but from a scale of zero to 10, what would you rate your hotness of? So that's how we met, hot, right? And then yes, you reached out to me. I reached out to him. I paid the six ninety five dollars per month to find <laughs> a military man. And then he didn't pay anything. His was like a gag. It was just for fun with his friends. And he was next to a hot bombshell boobalicious blondie but i was not i didn't have big boobs that back then so <laughs> looking at that old photo i was like this with the spaghetti straps <laughs> but I, i'm really happy to know that it wasn't his girlfriend it was a car show model what's yeah. with the air quotes i don't know i just, she was just I, I feel like i feel i just like saying that because i think people do it in interviews and i wanted to feel cool yeah that's okay <laughs> how how uh, soon did you guys know you were in love, though? Uh, really, first time I met her Aww. in person. We were talking for oh, for two months over the phone and able to messenger. And uh, she was in Baltimore. I was in Fort Stewart, Georgia. And I took the bus up on a 40 weekend. Yep. And the second night that we were together, I proposed to her. Wow. <laughs> love connection. Do you still know love connection? No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's a beautiful story. Like, you know, um, seeing that it move pretty quickly though, like how did you know, like, you know, and stuff that you guys like, you know, wanted to pursue adult film? Well, for me, I have always been a very big sexual person and a sex addict. So, um, I guess I have high energy. I'm a ball of fire. So I felt like a friend of mine just gave an idea and said, you look like that uh, Asa, Akira. Asa Akira. And I said, well, I guess so. I can see the resemblance. I mean, I bet you you could do that too. I mean, you model and stuff. I was like, well, that's at a different level. And I said, well, it looks pretty fun. I mean, she was hot. She had cool outfits. And I said, well, I'll just give it a try. You know, the first few years was more girl and girl. But this year, this guy stepped in the plates and I started doing boy girl. But he encouraged it. I wasn't ready about four years ago. Five, fifth year now, it's like, talk about patience. <laughs> it was like, okay, if you don't want to do boy girl, it's year five. And I'm going, you know what? I, I guess part of it is I was worried about what people would say. And that's probably a big thing for me. Uh, but I said, it does, like he said, it doesn't matter. You're living your life. You're embracing life. And if you don't make decisions like that, it might, you know, go past you in a split second. You don't know where life will take you by tomorrow. Not to sound so crazy like that, but you don't know for real. So I always want to take that risk because he's always a risk taker. I'm always like, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm like, okay, let me do it. There's the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sexy Buns, uh, you know, being being in the military, you know, uh, was that a concern of yours? Because you know, there's the uniform code of military justice. And, and uh, that's why I try to be as careful as I can with some of my stuff. 
Um, I don't actually tell anybody I'm in the military uh, for the most part. I just happen to be in uniform currently. So. <laughs> But yeah, you know, I, uh, uh, what do you think about that? Like, you know, being in the military, because th there are a lot of girls who have OnlyFans accounts and you see like, you know, these uh, posts on social media, sometimes girls getting discharged or whatever for like, you know, that. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think that it's not so like, I can see both sides of it. Um, I can see the side of, you know, if you're working in a, you know, there's always that uh, threat for, you know, if someone wants to blackmail you to try to get, you know, the intel and shit. But, you know, it, not everybody is in that type of a position. So, I mean, I feel like there's really a lot of... Sexual positions. No, I mean, the, I'm just kidding. I'm I, just feel, I was just messing you too. I feel like really it, it shouldn't matter, you know? Like, we try to... We, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I totally lost my train of thought, but basically I, I think that it's, it's silly to to do that. Like if you're not afraid and you're proud of what you do and whatnot, and you're not bringing the representing the military in it, then who the fuck cares? A hundred percent. Like, I mean, I think people like uh, should be able to have like, you know, uh, bodily autonomy, the military, it owns your body, but it doesn't own like, you know, what you can do, like, you know, in your, your free time. Yeah. Um, as long as it doesn't interfere, that's the, that's the key thing. Yeah, definitely. Um, what Jasmine, like, you know, so like, how would you guys like define your relationship? Do you consider yourself monogamous, polygamous? Like what? Well, um, this is where I like to say it because I've learned a lot of these words. I, a lot of people, well, we're swingers, naturally swingers. So I'm non-monogamous. Yeah, that, that word. Consensual as what? Consensual. <laughs> Consensual. Consensual non-monogamous. Non-monogamous. So I'm with him as my priority sex mate, my sex rider over here. Oh. <laughs> and I love my death. So obviously I come faster with my husband. Sorry, guys. It's just the truth. But everyone else is... Um, I do film, I do paid film, and I do paid work and business. And although it's business, it's always pleasure for me. But I really enjoy- We like this one on the side too, but- We do like this one on the side, but I'm just saying, I mainly have, yeah. you know, it's just, fornication it, 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 with- It just happens to work yeah. out that most of our, our swinger friends are all in the industry as industry, well. Industry, so. so it makes it easier. So we get tons <laughs> of sex. Yeah. <laughs> Well, like, uh, like, you know, how did you uh, get introduced to this world? Uh, so a friend of one of my coworkers, my soldiers actually yeah. introduced us to a friend of hers who was a yeah. photographer. Um, he used to shoot for Playboy and, and other stuff. And so he kind of helped us kind of get started, helped us get our OnlyFans up, off the ground. Yes. Um, but then we met. We just continue to network through Twitter and social media and things of that sort. And uh, this past year, we met with uh, Pam and Jesse, the yes. Easy Hot Wife. Yes. And Mr. J. And they kind of helped us reinvent her page. All of um, that. My image helped it out. Saying yeah, kind of defining the brands and yeah. such. Um, so basically, since like May, June timeframe, was when we really kind of started actually buckling down and, and trying to figure all this shit out. Yeah, it, like I said, it took me five years to figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. So what, telling me, telling us about people, that hard work pays off. I mean, I went from working at the club at Platinum West four years ago, and I've been there and it's still now, that they remember me when I had only like 100 followers. And now I'm getting thousands of people that are getting to know me, but I always tell people, don't forget about me where I used to be and I am now. I like to still stay humble and be very proud and help other models in that situation because I've been there, we've been there. When the times that your numbers aren't high and they don't like, oh, I don't know if I want to work with you. No, we started somewhere. If we hadn't worked with you, then how would I have gotten where I am today? Absolutely. So I think we're very like thankful and grateful for the people out there that led us to here. Um, we try to pay it forward. Yeah, so, yeah. So it's I, I want to thank my original photographer Jimmy Hardy, uh, AZ Hot Wife, uh, Mr. J, Mr. J. Uh, there's Lexi and Geo. There's Kitty Bell and Sean. There, um, there's uh, Peter Fitzwell, uh, Naomi um, Fox. 
So those are the names that really get to me because if I, I dedicate all my hard work and my inspiration through them because they're the ones that put our heads together and organize some kind of game plan and goal to reach because there's times when they told us there's going to be highs and lows, but you still keep trucking along. Like what you said, it's like in baseball. I don't play baseball. He does. But, you know, every swing, you keep swinging and whether or not you, you know, make it or you miss it, you just try to make the home base no matter how hard. And if you miss it, you know, keep trying. It doesn't hurt and don't give up. So that's what I always tell people. You know, what I hear is that um, a lot of passion in your voice about, like, you know, your work. I think, like, you know, a lot of people don't give, like, you know, people in the adult film industry the credit for being, like, entrepreneurs. Like, you know, how, you know, um, even though, like, you know, it's it's fun and you enjoy doing the work, which I think, like, you know, like, everybody, like, you know, hopes to have a job that they enjoy and they can get paid doing, you know, uh, how much of the business aspect, you know, would you say is learning like, you know, do you, do you feel like, you know, you don't necessarily get the respect in the business community that you deserve? Uh, I think this year, I think the- Are you talking about like, like business outside of porn? Yes, yes, yeah. So, I mean, because it's, it's still, there's a lot of shame tied to this stuff. And yeah. People that watch it seem feel seem ashamed to and then, admit and that they enjoy bit, and a judgmental it. saying, "Oh yeah. my gosh, I can't believe it." But guess what? We always talk about this: fitness and your sex hormones. They go hand in hand. And mm-hmm. if you don't have good sex hormones and your stress levels, they're just gonna plummet. So honestly, I went to a professional. I was a functional medicine doctor, and he said that if your sexual hormones are not as you age, you know, it's not gonna be balanced out then, you know, guess what? Sex plays a, a role, but I don't know why it's such a big deal for people to be like, oh my gosh, I think society puts, puts the stigma like, oh, it's a bad thing, but guess what? It's the healthiest thing. We have high stamina. <laughs> we have a very positive, like very, uh, our, our lifestyle. I feel like we're in a good mood. It's a, it's a good mood to set this mood. And, but for me, I think uh, overall, I think I chose the right business. I'm very proud. I wake up every morning. I do my work. I do social media. I'm doing what I love. And it's taken me like five to six years to get there. But I mean, I'm working with people that are names that are already well well known so that I can learn from them. Because as you pass your knowledge to others, you get stronger, you know, intellectually and physically. And then obviously the mind behind this is Mr. Sexy Buns because he's encouraged me to go you know, higher grounds. Like if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here doing what I love. You know, he's the one got me first place in lifting competitions, first place freaking in like bodybuilding competition and then valedictorian in college. Like he taught me how to study. Now he's teaching me to like uh, collaborate with uh, other people in the same field. But he said, you need to compete or just not really compete, but be as good as your competitors so that they could teach you and mentor you so that you can mentor others. So I'm not here to be like, we're better than you. We're here to say, we want to share the wealth. I want to share the fun. And we want to make each other better so that when we see each other, we can always praise each other for your greatness. And I don't think there's there's enough of that in the industry. There's always lots of jealousy, no matter where you go, no matter in this industry, (laughs) whether being a trainer, being any job, it's there, but I always watch like and read books about motivational like uh, quotes every day. And that's what he suggested. He bought me a book about motivation. So if I was going to put my my big, huge heart into it, I'd say um, be always very let's see, motivated about reading about motivational like speeches. Like I listen to Will Smith. I've listened to like. A Filipino, it was, uh, what was his name? <sighs> a Filipino. Renee. Renee. Yes, sir. Renee Lacad. Like, he became a millionaire at 24 years old. And to this day, he shares everything he knows. And I I'll, I listen to him, and it's working. So yeah. um, so for me, I just I just want people to also be in that same mindset. Yeah, I, I love inspirational speakers. I listen to uh, Eric Thomas and uh, Inky Johnson oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, less brown i think like you know it's important to you know have a positive mindset you know and exercise uh you talk about like you know enjoying social media and like you know the praise but like you know like you were kind of saying there's a lot of hate 
especially online, like, you know, today, like, you know, how do you deal with like, you know, the negativity and like, you know, the dark side of social media? So for me, I just don't let it get to me. I think to me, I, I always, like he suggested, laugh at it. <laughs> just like, if they're thinking about you, like the motivational speaker I heard, then there's, you're doing something right. Because if they like you too much, there's a problem. But if they hate you, it means you got to do something different. You got to do something crazy and fun to get their attention again. And that's what I want. I want them, their heads to keep spinning <laughs> and go crazy. <laughs> I'm crazy well, weird, so I, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, no, like, you know, I think like that just comes, like anybody could do anything, like, you know, it, it's so much of an emphasis on like cult culture and like society, like these days and stuff where people like, you know, become fanatical on like one side, like, and just not like necessarily letting like people live their life, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's why when I read these quotes, um, I take I take each week, I take, give five motivational quotes to people that I think that need it in their life, because mm -hmm. you never know that they, they are not in the positive mindset. They might be down. There's a side story behind what, how they feel. But to me, it helps me go through and help me out because I used to be had bad anxiety and depression in my past. But now I'm in the opposite position because I don't want to be that girl anymore. I want to be that girl like, man, I sure wish I had someone to think about me. Oh, guess what? My husband, you know, Mr. Sexy goes, goes, okay, why don't you text them? Do exactly what you wanted when you were in that down spot. And I'm like, you're right. And now it's like, I want to be noted for somebody who's actually thinking about a person, but in a good way. It's it's those, those Instagram posts. It's those uh, Twitter posts. It's anything on TikTok, I'm always like, oh, that looks fire, that looks great, you're killing it, you're going to grind, because I don't think we hear enough of it. We always see, like you said, the negative side to, to things, but we don't really see what's going on, why they're saying negative things. That person that's saying negative to you is really hiding something you don't know. Man, I was just having a conversation with someone and uh, we were talking about body positivity. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, um, you know, and I had a conversation with this girl and she was saying like, you know, that, you know, while she does solo work, the reason like, you know, she like, you know, doesn't want to do like adult film is because like, you know, she, um, you know, isn't comfortable in her body. And like, she doesn't want to be critiqued, like, you know, on that level and stuff, everything like, you know, how important is like, you know, body, body positivity in what you do? So I, for me, I think beauty comes in different shapes and sizes. What one person may think is beautiful may not be beautiful to another. So I think she should embrace her body, her feminism, how she feels, an expression of who she is. Because if she's worried about what other people are thinking, you never know. On the other side, that audience might be liking her, but like her boobs, or not even focus on her boobs, her butt, maybe her smile, her eyes, something. I used to think that way. I'm like, man, maybe maybe I'm. Uh, they don't like this, but Mr. Sexy Bun here is like, no, what you may like is what somebody else may like even more. So don't hide away who, who you are, especially your culture, your gender. You're, you're, you're giving a flavor to it, your, your personality, your own style. You want people to like you because that's who you are, not fake who you are. No, and I think like also like with adult film, um, the attractiveness doesn't necessarily always matter. I look at skill. And like, you know, there's people and stuff, everything like, you know, that I'm fans of that, you know, may not be the most conventionally attractive people, but they have great skill at what they do. They make like, you know, exciting yeah. scenes. Or personality, they right. have that kind of vibe where you're like that energy, like, wow, she's really great. Yeah, they really, that, like the vibe and the energy of people is, is really kind of what can make or break you. Like yeah. your confidence in yourself is really what makes you sexy. Yeah. You know, like we, you know, especially even like in the swinger lifestyle, like not everybody's a 10, you know, but <laughs> God dang, there are some people that, you know, conventionally, like you said, would be probably maybe like on a four level four or something, but their personality bumps it up. Like none of that matters. If you're comfortable in yourself, that's what people, you know, find sexy, you know, be you and, and be unapologetically, you, you know, and that's, that's what the camera will see. That's what your fans will see. And that's that's what's gonna make you who you are. Such a part. Proud of you, baby. Good. Um, <laughs> being being married, do you guys have plans on having children in the future? We have uh, three kids, all teenagers. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. Fifty. Yeah. Uh, do you tell your kids what you do for work? Or? Yeah. They know. 
Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah, soon enough. So we figured might as well be the ones to have that conversation with them rather than, you know, yeah. some idiot, you know, that pulls up the pulls up the hub and is like, oh, it's these parents. <laughs> Do, do have they ever had issues with people like you know of um like you know tease them about that or not that we're aware of there was a there was a whole little uh somebody found us out but kids these days it seems are actually like they move past things so much quicker <laughs> and, like, you'd have a you, know, you used to have when we were in high school you know you'd do something dumb and then that horrible nickname would follow you through your whole life at least all the way through high school you know uh, <laughs> Now, afterwards, I talked to a, a, another parent, a friend of ours, and he said when he talked to his kid about the, the incident, they were like, Dad, that's like two weeks ago. <laughs> like, that was so far from their mind. Like, they, yeah. TikTok is kind of, I think TikTok has helped with that. You know, like, oh, well, yeah, this was cool last week. Oh, zoop. Nope, don't need that. No On more. to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about like, you know, the short limp of attention spans, like, you know, these days, does that affect like, you know, like uh, the type of content you put out, you know, as far as like the limp times? Yeah. So for me, I kind <clears> of <throat> do an experiment. Like one day I'll do a 15 second video and then another day I'll do like a whole minute because I'm playing out with numbers. But guess what? I get the same results no matter what length. So, you know, someone had told me, I think it's too long. And then someone said to me, no, we like it long because it's educating us. Someone else will be like, I like your craziness. So I kind of like how you go all the way out. So I think it's as long as the fans or the audience appreciate what you love, it doesn't matter the length. Now, if you're talking about money and numbers and what do you think, if you're so far into that, then you're not in the right job because you have to be something that you really enjoy. And I love this job. Like I'm doing way more than I've ever done in my life. And I wake up very happy to do it <laughs> so and then he's like are you why are you still on social media i'm like i just love doing I just my like that stuff. i sound absolutely like that too. <laughs> 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 no um, yeah. to also to kind of add to that as well is just that uh it it that's the beauty of having multiple different um platforms as well because yes. you can have ones that are shorts you know you can put shorts on different things like on, a, on the hub or on only fans um and then you could do like a full length type thing and throw that one on on many bits. That way, there's you know different Some different extra. avenues for yep. people to go and, and get the longer version if they want it. You know, give them something, leave them wanting more. Almost is kind of even better. Yeah, yeah. like um, you, I've, I've I've from previous conversations, you have a really good business mind, uh, Mr. Sexy Buns. Because <laughs> uh, like I've talked with adult film performers, and uh, a lot of them don't see it that way. Uh, like, you know, I think like, you know, they favor like, you know, putting in content on like, you know, like maybe like one site and like, I, like, I don't uh, see the, like, you know, the sense in that, like, you know, uh, I think like, you know, because there's so many multiple platforms, yeah. it seems like, you know, you should diversify and have your content like, you know, on, on other places as opposed to just being in one, one place. That doesn't make any sense to me. You know, if I'm, if I'm pulling it, you know, if we're pulling in 10, 20, 30 grand a, a, a month <laughs> on, you know, one site, then. I can I can see where some people feel like yeah why would I bother right you know? <laughs> but yeah we're there yet so we're you we're, know we're still at that struggling point but we're still what we decided to do we we join every single platform <laughs> we were like yeah, we're it, doing it, it all it to a point where you know we'll, every once in a while we'll kind of reevaluate do a cost analysis and see yeah. like is it worth the amount of time we're putting getting everything out on everything you know and if it's not if it doesn't make sense then, then we'll, we you know we'll adjust it. from there. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, right now, like we're, we're just kind of trial and error and see yeah. what works. And we're and so we're work. still so new in the industry, so yeah. right. it'd rather you know get it out everywhere and anywhere. And then as people come to us, then the numbers will kind of tell us where we need to kind of focus more of our attention and energy. Definitely. Uh, do you guys like you know have a long term goal of like what you're trying to achieve? Oh, we do already established a long term. Yeah. Goal. So our our. So we have several different goals. I mean, we want to we want to eventually start up our own studio, you know, MSB, Mr. Sexy One Studio, um, kind of do a little bit of uh, fetish and, and adult film. Uh, and then we want to kind of take more people under our wing and do mentorship programs, kind of like um, like shoot houses and, and shoot cation and stuff like that, but have more of an educational aspect to it as well. Um, you know, try to cater to the, the new ones that are going to come up and, and replace us. 
you know, because eventually, you know, everybody's got a shelf life and you've got to pivot once you're, uh, once you hit that point. Um, I would rather, you know, that we get what we can now and then develop the younger minds to, to come in and take over for us. And, you know, then hopefully that can kind of help shift that stigma and kind of get more people into knowing what really is awesome about this industry because there's some of the most amazing people we've ever met have been in the industry yeah and we also want to launch so launch our podcast yeah our podcast just is... cruising so we already have our intro and outro but we just had to add music but we already did some already interviews already so it's has definitely shocked people but i was like well you know i wanted to show people that we're both positive people you know we always uh praise good things about this kind of lifestyle uh, we don't want any negative. We don't want any like drama. We right. want to. I I don't drink alcohol, smoke, and other drugs. So I'm gonna put that out there and be like, look, everything you think I'm getting high, I'm getting high on life, not high on what you think it is. And <laughs> stay fit in the porn industry. We definitely have to have high stamina and do some crazy porn poses, mm-hmm. yoga poses. So, <laughs> but for for him and I, it's it's good as a I call it a power couple. That we could bring our ideas together because he he did have a vision five years ago that I'm surprised. Like I cried one night going, oh my God, whatever you just said five years ago, it's happening now. He's like, yeah, you said you weren't going to get to this level. And I'm at that level where I'm actually going, how that happen? He said, a little faith. We just, he said, I believe in you and have faith. And I said, yeah. I don't know if I have faith in myself, but he goes, I know you do. So I'll put it in your work, put it in your ethic, put it in the people that have always had faith in you. And I said, oh my God, you're right. So that's what I almost gave up. And I was about to say, do it. I'm not seeing any results. But then he said, Let, let's get some people to help us. Let's get people, let's let's see what we can do. Let's let's travel, let's keep traveling. Let's just keep talking. Let's go to these events, conventions. And I'm so exhausted going, is this working or what? Because I'm tired. And he goes, guess what? So does everybody else, they're exhausted. Right. But they're doing exactly what you're doing, but they're still going strong. So I thank Mr. Sexy Buns for this. And now that I'm on your, your wonderful interview, I thank you too. You Mr. Like- Sexy Buns, you have a very positive mindset. Uh, you know, like listening to you, I really believe in the power of words, you know, and having, uh, you know, um, do you think it's manifestation? That's what, like, you know, do you believe in that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, you got to you put it out in the universe and that's you got to believe it and work until you get to it. You know, there's no, what is that term? I think it's like self, self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, you know, when you start, if you say you're not going to do it, then you're not going to do it. You know, you got to keep pushing, keep dreaming and, and keep working towards it. Otherwise, you know, what, otherwise why even bother? Why waste the energy? You know, like just put your heart into everything you do. Let, let it, let yourself shine through it. And, you know. And people will notice it too. Yeah. That's what he said. And they're noticing it now because I put so much into it. And, uh, and I always say, oh, you're always everywhere. Because I want them to remember me, you know, remember who I am. Like, remember, like, we are a loving couple. And then knowing that we also share our ups and downs. And it's not always going to be perfect. But guess what? That's what makes us even more stronger together is knowing that we'll have those challenges. But, you know, everyone runs into them as well. So mm-hmm. but thank you for being my guiding stone. Yeah, that's uh, really beautiful. This really beautiful. Um, what would, what advice would you have for people who are entering the adult industry? Uh, don't quit. Don't don't let it. Uh, keep on grinding. Get it. Keep on grinding. <laughs> uh, you know, treat the same thing as you would in any other thing. You know, treat people the way that you want to be treated. Um, people are going to find you, and as long as you keep that confidence and keep keep working, keep meeting people, keep networking. You know it's gonna be okay. Yeah. But and don't don't if this isn't something that you actually want, then then don't don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. You know, like there's some people that'll jump in thinking, oh well, you know, I'm gonna go in and it's gonna be instant fame and fortune and all this and well, it's it's not always like that. Yeah. And you know, if that's all you're chasing, then you know maybe find something something different. You know, really want to be here is really kind of what I say. Like. If you want, like, if you've got to want this and you've got to actually know that you're going to enjoy all of this stuff, because I, I think that it can jade you way too much if if you go in here and just chasing off, you know, chasing the dollar. 
Yeah, I agree. You pretty much put everything together. Oh my God. But no, but the same thing. Uh, don't, don't give up if you, that's something that you really want to do. And know that, you know, some people may say negative things. Just be prepared to come out with a positive kind of um, comeback. Yeah. So everything you do in life, there's always going to be a negative person, a negative Nancy, and be like, ah. Oh. But then, you know what? Brush that off. Like you said, stay confident. And, yeah, exactly. Do what you love. And obviously, I love this. I'm a sex addict. So. Believe in yourself. Believe like, in yourself. Don't let anybody else tell you what you're not going to be. You are the only one that can tell you who you are and who you're not going to be. So, and stay hydrated, too. Especially in the <laughs> and that is, hydration is important. That's uh, <laughs> you don't run out of fluids during the times you need it for the porn scenes. <laughs> eat healthy. Eat healthy, too. We, I usually eat, uh, what you call it, the poke. The poke meals. That helps with that's <laughs> lots of nutrients. That's the truth. That's I the always truth. Saw, hey, because before you go and get poke, go have some poke. poke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I love a uh, poke bowl. That's like, you know, really good, man. I go there like, you know, uh, whenever I get the chance and stuff. Uh, you know, how uh, important is it like, you know, like exercising and like, you know, uh, like eating healthy, like, you know, in, in, in your career, like, you know, is there ever times and stuff, everything like, you know, where you feel tempted and stuff, everything to cheat? Me? Uh, I cheat on my off days from porn. Yeah, I do. I think <laughs> I do. I don't eat it during the, like, the scenes. Oh, my God. Not during the scene. Not during the scene. But if I have a week <laughs> of like I have scenes to be done, I, I mainly stick to uh, green tea, uh, lots of poke, like you said, um, and just help. I do smoothies. When the scenes are done and I'm about to go, I do eat my chocolate chip cookies, the homemade ones. They're really delicious. You know the baked ones that melts in your mouth and your teeth and it melts and it's just like you eat? Maybe you should tell them about how like you oh, used to yeah. feel before you actually started focusing on oh. eating healthier. What? How how did you feel back when you weren't actually focusing on diet and making sure you got your exercise? Oh and yeah. So I used to be very sluggish. I couldn't even like last and I would almost pass out. I think on a scene I, I called Mr. Sexy Bun and I told him I'm I'm not feeling right. I I, I exercise, I've eaten, and then he goes, I think you're not getting the right nutrition in your body the right nutrients. I, mean, I would just eat like eggs or I just eat like something small like that egg oatmeal. But then now I'm doing poke, more salad, more greens. And eggs, more are, eggs aren't steak. bad either. It's just making sure that you have enough nutrients. Yeah, I didn't yeah. have enough nutrients. I just said I just had the yeah, eggs itself. Eating small or something. Like, bigger ate, portion. Yeah, so now I'm changing that up. So that's one thing I want to, you know, illustrate to other people in porn that, you know, that's the, you have to make sure you have enough nutrients yeah. in your body. So to sustain that level of as you get older energy, too, it, it becomes more and more <laughs> hey, you know, those of us in our uh, you know late thirty late thirties early forties. That's true. It's you a, know it's when you're twenty, lines. you can a lot of there's a lot of there's plenty of twenty year olds out there that can have you know cheeseburgers every day and pizza and ramen and which I'm jealous of. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I think I speak for both of us when we say we hate you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But no, like uh, you know, eventually that that'll catch up to you. So, mm -hmm. you know, the sooner you can get into that type of routine, the better it's going to be for you just in general. And also it's going to help you with your performance. Definitely. Um, Mr. Sexy Buns, Jasmine Cruz, uh, thank you guys so much for taking the time. Uh, what's next in your career? What's next in my career? Well, we're going to X-Biz. Miami. In Miami. Hey, you want to watch us and meet us? We'll be there. And I am still working on more porn films. Um, I just shot uh, one with Team Skeet. I played a Muslim girl doing it yeah. to an American guy. And you did with uh, MB Productions. And, and she got to meet the one and only Corey Chase, Corey Chase and uh, Luke Longley. And Luke Longley. That's right. Yeah. I did a, a, a shoot. That was pretty that. exciting. So I would like to be hired for more paid shoots um, and hopefully in L.A. Yeah. Now I hit Florida and I have to hit L.A. You know yeah. what? I got to hit another challenge. And right. I also want to expand his modeling slash video career as Mr. Sexy Bones because I must I just did a photo shoot with my photographer, which is Acuity Photography, and I asked if he can also be modeling. So watch out, world, for his modeling career to take off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Never mind. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, I love the fact that you guys are you know uh, interracial and like you know uh, you seem very like you know open and inclusive. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of like, you know, talk about like, you know what I mean? As far as like the adult industry and like sometimes like, you know, the racism associated with it, like, you know, and, you know, you guys being like, you know, uh, um, in a racial couple, like, you know, how do you guys deal with your own like brand of, you know, prejudice? Um, I mean, we kind of, we try to take things with a grain of salt. Um, I always try to attribute ignorance before assuming malice. Um, I don't think a lot of it is as malicious as, as most people seem to think it is. Um, sometimes really it's just kind of going off of what sells the most or what's the, the easiest to role to play or, you know, like at how, how, for how many years is, you know, big boot blondes or just blondes in general have been, it's just, I mean, that's typically even now when listen to songs and stuff, they talk about, you know, blonde hair, blue eye or whatever. Um, like I said, I just, I, I would rather not assume that it's, you know, that, that they have racism or any type of hate in their heart. I mean, there's plenty of them out there anyways, but I right. think that really as, as you go and as you build your fan base, I mean, maybe that will kind of help to change things. Um, and we want to change that too, knowing that we're both in a racial couple and we love each other. We want to tell people like, Hey, you know, we're together. We love each other, but let's be on the color thing yeah we try to we try to keep it more as you know very well (laughs) no but like uh it's it's about the it's about the person it's not about the the pigment um okay now you're sounding like a freaking martin luther king thing whoa (laughs) i'm kidding that's i mean i think that's a beautiful uh message and like you i think it really like um brings to light like you know uh like you know, some of the contradictions in society, because like, you know, there are a lot of times and stuff or anything where people try to stigmatize porn, the people in the adult industry and stuff, you guys, like you know what I'm saying, I think are, are incredible for taking the time to do this interview and just like, you know, uh, be so open and vulnerable, you know, and answer questions and stuff from a complete stranger and stuff and everything. And I appreciate you guys, you know, it's cool. Yeah, Thank you for giving yeah. us the, this, this platform to, to kind of spread our message and kind of just who we are. Yeah, and I like your interviews too. I've watched you on Instagram. It's always about positive messages. So that's oh, why I you. to you. Because <laughs> yes, that's what we try to bring in. So I mean, I'm an attention whore. I'll say yes to anybody. He <laughs> likes the debate. He likes the debate. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you guys are uh, welcome back anytime and stuff. Everything as the platform continues to grow and stuff. Everything. I uh, really appreciate speaking with you guys today. Likewise. Thank you. Definitely. Have a nice one. You okay, as well, thank sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye.